Alrighty folks, hello, and thank you for joining me here. I'm gonna actually, um, alright, how we start this off, I, every night, I, uh, actually sometimes more than just every night, but oftentimes during the day too, I'll, I'll, uh, get my answers from the Lord through His own word in the book, um, I've done this since I was, for many years, since I was locked up, I started doing it, and uh, I could ask a question, or in prayer, and um, open up the book, and he would always give me an answer in his own scripture that was uh, always pertinent to the question asked. Um, here recently, it was last night actually, but I was kind of given the compelation or compelled to uh, through the spirit to use these to make some points and so tonight we're going to read three chapters to make four points four important points that uh, whether you're an avid follower in the body of Christ or whether you're just starting out or even if you're one of the sheep or the hive uh, it's all the same points and they're very pertinent it's, one of them is actually directed to the hive first off I actually have my book in front of me and I will probably be reading it out of my book although I will give also a screen um, this is Biblos um, the site you can just punch in Biblos like I see up here into your Google, it'll take you the first choice is on the page, and then you can click it to there. I recommend it as uh, it's about the best Bible site that I've seen online, and it's very handy to have online Bible for reference because you can just punch in what you're looking for into the search, and it'll take you directly to the uh, applicable uh, verses or chapters. However, just to show you kind of how to use it first off I always do is I go straight to the King James okay you have all different types of Bibles here that you can choose from it also has different languages uh, Hebrew etc as you can see up here at the top flags don't matter where you are in the world click the flag and it'll go to your language um, so and how to use this real quick like I said I always first thing when I come to it You'll, you'll come to an opening screen that has apps and everything on it. Um, I immediately just push the King James Bible. Okay, King James is the only one that should be used because the newer versions, uh, even the new King James and stuff, they have changed words, which for a deeper study of the meanings, uh, changing the words and the, and the uh, uh, translation makes a huge difference especially if you're looking for prophecy which we're not tonight um, I have another chapter I'll actually read in another video that was given to me about a week ago and uh, in that uh, uh, but that needs to come after this so and then go up here you can do the drop down menu here and if you're looking for a certain book which we're looking for John tonight John, I'm going to take us to the King James Version of John 1, and it's what we actually want to start on is John 15, verse 1, and I'll be reading three chapters tonight, and then an extra verse, and just to run through the main points, although I'll point them out when we come across the verses themselves, um, some of them, uh, first off, the first point is okay um what is the first point okay i'm trying to gather my thoughts here what i was thinking of earlier um one okay in these uh you will find at least three if not four if i remember correctly examples of how if you pray for it in the name of christ and you're a follower of his commandments and part of his chosen one uh, and yes, he chooses, and that will be also proven in this scripture here too. He has chosen you. And uh, it's not that you choose him, you can choose him. 
but then he chose you because he was here first and uh, the point being is that your uh, the examples given will show that your uh, your prayers through him in faith will be answered okay he he tells you and promises you that as part of being one of his believers and followers and abiders um the other points um one of them is something okay one of the main ones actually as it'll be towards the end really um but it is a very important one i've been confronted not only online lately uh but even i've talked to people here uh, a couple friends of mine too a brother of mine um that uh, we're confused with this Hollywood idea that has been injected in some movies before and other places I think it is actually taught by some uh, pastors or preachers or whatever um, about Christ on the cross uh, saying to the Father why have you forsaken me okay this is a falsehood Christ never said that and um, he had no reason to say that and that's a twisting through Hollywood movies and stuff of the truth and is a mockery of Christ is what it is and through these scriptures we'll give you at least two examples of how Christ knew exactly what he was there to do and knew what he had to go through to do it and uh, therefore would never say such a comment as such that people seem to think he said he has never in anywhere point in time asked the father why he had forsaken him because he knows the father did not forsake him at any point in time okay that's one of the main points of reading this is to prove that to people who may be under that misconception uh, another thing in these scriptures we will also prove as well that uh, and it, this is proven through many of scriptures and I've actually gotten into some comment discussions on one of my videos about it and given other scriptures to point towards it that Christ and the Father are one they are as one they are one they are in one and through Christ we also become one with the Father now this is not to be confused with this one world idea the one of the world everybody here on the world is one we're all one we're all part of some one thing this is untrue we are not one there are the wheat and there are the tares and this is very specific in other scripture as well however the worlders the world one is referring to this idea of the hive that's what it is the hive uh, can be uh, example through the Borg like in Star Trek uh, you will be a simulated you know resistance is futile etc 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 the cube the giant cube some people never watch the new generation Star Trek but I'm just using that as one example of how they they portray it and metaphorically um, the one world the one world government the one world the the new agers with their oh we're all one we need to love 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 and we're all one is the hive it is a trap it is a delusion and deception okay and this scriptures these chapters I'm about to read will also prove that yes if you're a follower of Christ if you're a believer of Christ if you keep Christ's commandments and are in Christ and part of the body of Christ chosen to be then you are one with Christ and the Father as you are reborn into that role okay which is actually a DNA fix um, but I'm not going to get into DNA we've got plenty of videos on that subject uh, separately uh, and also in these scriptures it will very well clarify that you are not part of the world you are not of the world and Christ was not of the world we are separated from the world and do not belong to the world 
and should not belong to the world or so to the world okay so all the worlders they have their little one thing going on uh, that's not one in Christ that's not one in the Father um, okay that's three points um, and, uh, there was a fourth one but we'll, we'll, we'll just read and we'll see and then maybe it'll come to me what that fourth one was um, so let us go ahead and start with John 15 in the King James Version and it says I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me I am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing if a man abideth not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you that's the first example of your prayers being answered through Christ herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples as the father hath loved me so have I loved you continue ye in my love if ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go forth and bring fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you these things I command you that ye love one another okay so there's a second example of your prayers being answered in his name through him if the world hate you okay ye know that it hated me before it hated you if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world but I have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you okay remember that the word I, I said unto you the servant is not greater than his Lord if they have persecuted me they will also persecute you if they have kept my saying they will keep yours also okay so are all the TI's and that uh, if you, you you know if you're a TI and you're not spiritual yet you better get spiritual because it is a spiritual thing the people who are attacked are the people in Christ in the body of Christ the churchianity Christians they're delusioned they're believing the uh, candy ass Christianity that they're being fed about you'll get all you want and all you give and this and that uh, without uh, having to do anything for it just by believing uh, in Christ in other words people think they can uh, just just because you believe in Christ and half ass go to church on Sundays and then you spend the rest of your week in sin that you're going to be saved um, that you don't have to pick up the cross and bear the cross with Christ this is untrue and cry when you go in front of Christ he's going to say I don't know you that's what he's going to tell you I don't care how much how many times you go to church but anyway I digress point is he is not of the world and that's uh, the persecution 
is coming down on the body of Christ. Uh, everybody else is living in a delusion. That is their persecution, is the deception that they are under. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sin, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin, no covering. Okay. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father? But this cometh to pass, pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Okay. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Okay, let's go on to John 16. These things I have spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, churches. Yea, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Okay, and these things they will do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And the time has come, folks, the time has come. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you at the beginning. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whether thou goest thou. Now understand, this is right. These are the three chapters right before the chapter where they came and got him. Okay, and we're going to read one verse out of that chapter, chapter 18 at the end of this. Uh, just to prove one of my points here and the purpose of this video. But whither thou go, so what he's talking about here, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I, not go, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Okay, here's the first hint that he knows what's going to happen. He knows what he has to do. He knows what he's about to go through. Okay, keep that in mind. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they believe not in me, or on me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged, and we know who the prince of this world is. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Okay, the Spirit of truth will be the Holy Spirit, and he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he, sh he will shew you things to come. He will show you the truth. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Okay, here's his second time. He knows what's about to happen. He's talking about right here. Ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and then ye shall, ye shall see me. That's, that's the time of the in between the resurrection. He dies, they won't see him. Then again he'll come back for a little while, and they shall see him. And it was because he goes to the Father first. And then said some of his disciples amongst themselves, and see, if this was a red letter version like my Bible is, you'd, you'd see the difference of what's being, he says and what he 
it doesn't say but um, in the red letter version now right here at 17 this is the disciple speaking and this would be in black this said I mean then said some of his disciples among themselves what is this that he saith unto us a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me and because I go to the father they said therefore what is this that he saith a little while we cannot tell what he saith okay now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him just like many times in scripture before especially here in John he knows the questions and the, and before they even he reads their minds basically pull you know reads right through their minds and knows what they're gonna what their doubts are what their hopes are what their everything before they even have to speak it aloud and said unto them do ye inquire okay this is Jesus speaking right here at the do ye do ye inquire amongst yourselves of that I said okay this is before they said anything He's, he already knows and a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me verily verily I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy after they see him again see and a woman when she is in travail hath sorrow because her hour is come but as soon as she is delivered of the child she remembereth no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world and ye now therefore have sorrow but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man can take it from you and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily I say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it to you there again the third time your prayers in his name will be answered to you hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full the fourth time ask in his name and you shall receive okay and that, that doesn't mean ask for winning the lottery or some stupid material worldly thing okay because he's not of the world this is of the spirit okay so I mean don't get stupid with it people because I mean if you ask for stupid things your, your your prayer may be answered in a way that you you least expect and you probably don't want but I again I digress let's get back to this <laughs> these things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs but I shall shew you plainly of the Father at that day you shall ask in my name and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you for the Father himself loveth you, because he hath loved me, and hath I have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and I am come into the world. Again I leave the world, and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Okay. And this, again, is... is not him speaking against it would be in black in your in your Bible if you had a red letter Bible um, and now we are sure or we, are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee so now they're sure that he knows all things and by this we believe that thou camest forth from God and Jesus answered them do ye now believe behold the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Okay, again, here's how he, an example of he knew when the time was. He knew what was about to happen. He knew what he was about to go through. Okay, every bit of what happened, he was there to do and fulfill, and he knew this. So there's no way in, excuse my expression, hell, that
that he would sit there and uh, and say something like, "Why hast thou forsaken me, Father?" or whatever the darn line was in that stupid movie that everybody gets this stuff from. Um, he never said that, okay, ever. That's, I mean, it's quite clear. So these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, okay. S so to him, look to him for everything, to provide for everything and all your means. That goes back to the original sin. The original sin, folks, was not having knowledge. Okay, that is not the original sin, and I'll just add that at the end of this. I'll show you where it's not knowledge; it's deception. It's this deception knowledge. It it should have been translated the tree of deception, not the tree of knowledge, because he doesn't abhor knowledge. In fact, he wants you to have knowledge, but he wants you to have the proper knowledge, not the deception. It talks about how the, basically. We turned away from the Lord and we followed the serpent. That was the temptation. That was the fruit. The whatever it is in the world that you seek after, whether it's money, technology, cars, women, whatever it is, that is in the mistake. That is the sin. Going to the world and sowing to the world. And in the world, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Let's go to 17. These words spake Jesus. Okay. And he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify, also glorify thee, or also may glorify thee. Okay. Here, I'll get back to the, um, the son and... As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay, the Father gave us to him. He gives us to the Father. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth, and I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Okay? Jesus was with the Father before the world was ever created. And he had the glory before the world ever existed. Before this construct that you think is a planet. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Okay, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Okay, so the men that he gave to him, he manifested the name. He gave them the knowledge of the Lord to those men which were given to him in the world or of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. See, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever hath thou hast given me are of thee. Okay, all things that the Father gave Jesus are of the Father. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them. They have accepted the words as truth. And accepted Jesus as from the Father as truth. And have known surely that I have come out from thee. Come out or that I came out from thee. Okay. He came from the Father. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Okay. Again here. He is not of the world. He's not about the world. Okay. He's about his people. But for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. Those people that he's given them are also thine, the fathers. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Okay, and we glorify him in his name. And we testify for him and we witness for him. And now I have no I am no more in the world. 
but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be as one as we are. Here we go again with the point I made earlier. Christ and the Father are one. We, through Christ, are one with the Father and Christ. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. None of them. None of us are lost. He will make it to where we're not lost. Even if we get lost, we will come back. Because we're not ever really lost. The only one who's lost is but the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them my wor thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Okay? And this goes with the spiritual gang stalking and all this goes on. This is why they hate us. They hate us, and they do hate us literally, terribly, so, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou, that thou should keepest them from the evil, okay, the protection is in the Lord, the only protection from the gang stalking, from the, whatever you want to call it, you know, if you have bad luck, you have this, you have that, you have hard times, tribulation, this and that, it is only because you turned away from the Lord. If you keep in the Lord and always turn towards the Lord for all your your uh, needs and even desires, as I said, he, he, he didn't bring us down here to necessarily suffer. He takes care of his people, believing he does. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. See, so we're here to serve him and be glorifying him. We're not here to glorify the world. We're not here to glorify our bank accounts. We're not here to glorify how big a house we have or how many cars we got or how famous we are. We're here to glorify Jesus Christ. Period. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. See, so that is the opening right there. For all you non-believers, for all you people with doubts, for all you that don't know for sure. You shall believe on me through their word. Their word meaning the word of those who are chosen. The word like the word I am giving you now. Or like the word of the disciples who wrote this book. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me. One in him. And I in thee. That they also may be one in us. One in Christ, one in the Father. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. Again, Jesus and the Father are one. I in them, and thou in me. And that they may be made perfect in one. This is, again, not to be confused with the worldly one. This one world, oh, we're all one in love and all this and that. You know, because we're not. There's there's two different kinds here. You have two different uh, species, if you will, here. On this, uh, in this place. You know, so some would say on this planet. They think it's a round planet and all that, but anyway... And that the world may, be, may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, 
as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. So we will join him where he is when we are done here. That they may behold his glory, or my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Before this construct was created. Before this place, world, world, planet was even ever created. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. You take on Christ in you, his spirit, his being, his glory, his love, everything encompassed into one with the Father in Christ. Not one with the world, not one with the new world order, not one with the uh, new agers, not one with the aliens, <laughs> uh, one with the Father in Jesus, through Jesus Christ. Now we're going to go a little bit into John 18 just so I can finish off my point about uh, the th one of the things that just really gets my goes when people try to say that little saying about, well, why did he say, you know, about forsaking him and all this. He never said that, people. It never, that's some bullcrap spinoff out of Hollywood. You know, the magic wand, the holly tree, the Hollywood that made the magic wand out of. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over Brook Cedron, where there was a garden um, into which he entered, and his disciples, and Judas well, also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, and this is in red, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. Okay? Knowing all things that should come upon him. Okay? And the, the Father is him. He is the Father. They are in one. Okay. He knows what he's there to do. He knows what he came for. He finished the works that he had to do upon the earth to impress upon the people of his coming and who sent him. And they believed him and that mission was finished. So now it was time to finish up and he knew that they were coming for him. He knew, he knows what he's going to go through. He knows that he's going to hang on the cross. He knows that he has to shed his blood in order to create the situation in the doorway and to fix our DNA, to fix this affliction. You see the people wearing t-shirts all the time with that affliction. That's what this is talking about. It's talking about the half and half, the messed up DNA of uh, the devil trying to corrupt everything because that's the devil's jealous of the Lord's creation. That's been the whole point from the get-go. From the very beginning of Genesis, which is, you know, genetics, DNA. That's what, all, that's what all Genesis is all about. That's why it's called Genesis. Okay, so, <coughs> ah, excuse me for that. Um, so, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and, and fell to the ground. Then he asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. And that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake, Of them which thou givest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having the sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. 
the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? See, so right there, he knows what he has to do. He shall drink of the cup. He shall follow through with what he has to do. And just like before, would he not give up his life? Would it not you give up your life for your friend? Okay? He knows he's going to give up his life. So no, he never said that crap that people spout. That just, it's, it's like, to me it's like shoving a dagger in my heart when I hear somebody say that. And especially if they're a believer and I know that they're trying to follow Christ and they've just been deceived by that bullcrap line. So with that, I'm going to stop here because if you want to continue on, I do suggest you always, every night at, at least, I know people are busy in their life, okay, and you have to, you have to make your way through the world, especially in these hard times today. But you also need to make time for, for Christ and for the Lord. And uh, the more time you can devote to Him, the better. But at least, at the very least, if you really want to get to know Jesus and want to get to know the Father, then you have to spend time in the Word. You have to understand and pray for understanding. Don't pray to win the lottery. Pray for understanding. Be like, be like uh, Solomon was. Solomon didn't pray for, you know, when he, when he prayed to the Father, he wanted to be a good judge. He wanted to be able to tell right from wrong, and that's what he prayed for. And the and that pleased God. That pleased God that he prayed for such a a unselfish wish that God not only gave him that discernment. You know, Solomon was the wisest of all men ever, and the smartest. And he gave the Lord gave him that prayer and wished granted him that prayer, but he also heaped upon him. Everything else that goes that that he would have, you know, that he didn't ask for the riches, the power, the uh, position, the this and the, you know all that stuff came with it. Okay, you don't you know the Lord's going to take care of you. You just got to be you got to follow His commandments and you got to be faithful and do the best you can, you know, and do do better than your best you can. Go out of your way to please the Lord. Okay, because he is the only thing you need to fear. You don't need to fear this stuff going on in the world. It's all an illusion. It's all a test to test your faith. Bottom line, if you're of the body of Christ, all this stuff going on is to test your faith. Whether it's a personal event, like I'm undergoing some personal events right now that are very threatening to me. Very threatening to me, personally. But I'm not afraid. Okay, because I am in the Lord, and He is my salvation. He is my freedom. He is everything for me. He provides everything for me, from my health to my well-being to my sanity. Period. Um, the world. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into my <laughs> personal issues. The point is, lean into Him, especially in this time of judgment. In this time of great deceptions, every, where everything on the TV is being a lie, where they're where they're doing, where if you're under attack, if you're like a TI and that's getting gang stalked and stuff, your only protection is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can protect and save you and cloak you. Okay, and he is also the only one who can fix your DNA, which is already corrupted way back way back and, and it was corrupted you know back in the times of Noah and uh, before the flood and after that they were here after that it's quite clear in Genesis 6 um, now I did say I wanted to read one more about no <clears throat> damn excuse me that's that salmon salmon fish I, I beat uh, bashing them heads in with first and then I ate no, <laughs> never mind. That's from a comment on another video earlier. I'm just, I'm clowning. Um, hold on, let me come up here. I want to find that it's not knowledge. Okay, people are like afraid of, oh, you're not supposed to know knowledge. Knowledge was the sin. That's, you ate from the tree of knowledge. That's this and that, blah, 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 blah. No, 
eating from the tree of knowledge and that whole story is metaphorical for being deceived by false knowledge okay that's why he said don't eat of that tree because it was a tree of deception it was it was that knowledge was not true knowledge it was the false knowledge and the serpent tempted Eve with it and then Eve you know tempted Adam or whatever and uh, they turned away from the Lord and they started going towards the world and it's like people that go you know um, they rely on science which is science is sorcery that's what it is it's just a modern name for sorcery okay and it's all a trick it's a trick of illusion in your mind but here Hosea 4 6 I invite anybody who thinks that the God doesn't like uh, knowledge my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge I will also reject you that you shall be no priest to me seeing you have forgotten the law of your God I will also forget your children okay my people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declares to them for the spirit of prostitutions has caused them to err okay the misleading spirits prostitutions doesn't it's not talking about sex okay although that can be included too but it's it's prostitution of all type okay and has caused them to err okay so and this is uh I don't even, this is Biblios too. You can go to Biblios. This is actually an app page, which was I think is for telephone or something. Even though it's on my computer now, you can see it's a different format than the page we were just on back here. You know, which has all this uh, high tech stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can play around on here, and there's all kinds of tools and and all kinds of stuff to uh, use to help you in your studies and what have you. But uh, just want to throw the Isaiah or the Hosea in there, um, and there's Isaiah too, a bunch of Isaiahs. Uh, therefore, my like Isaiah five thirteen. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished. Now, talking about food, talking about famished for knowledge. They don't have knowledge. Our so-called honorable men would be. You know our leaders nowadays, which are all into the masonry and the uh, mystery Babylon and the ancient Egyptian priests' religions, uh, the magic, the sorcery, the druidism, the uh, all that type of stuff is deception. It's deceiving you, and you are famished for true knowledge. The true knowledge is of the Lord, and it is in the Word of the Lord, in the Bible. In the book that everybody tries to say, oh, well, men wrote that. It doesn't mean anything. You wouldn't. You have no clue what the Bible can do. It is a living, multi-dimensional book. It is a. It's a computer in paperback. And only true followers and believers will understand what I mean by that. They know how to use it and know how to understand it and know how to read it, and that is only given to you by the Spirit, by the Comforter, by the Holy Spirit that Jesus sends down. There's only, you know, a lot of people have trouble understanding, especially the King James Version, because the way it's written, written and the way it was spoken. But it, once you have the Spirit of the Lord, once you are actually committed and turned your life over to Christ to be one of His if you're chosen so you know the tares uh is it, the separation has already come so a lot of a lot of the uh, actual tares the people who have made their choice they're not going to come to christ they weren't meant to come to christ the wheat and the tares grow together so with that i will end this um because i may have to cut it up to put in or on my mind crime channel i'll just put a small video together that points to this one like I had to do with the tribe of Dan uh, since the deceiver David Ike uh, put the uh, copyright thing on me and uh, for one even though there's tons of his video I said I'm never gonna get over that you know tons of his videos on the internet 
yet I get a copyright strike from David Icke Books, which knocked me back down to 15 minutes on my Mind Crime channel after I'd gone, what, two or three years I had uh, unlimited upload. And it really screwed up a lot of my projects that, um, that I was doing. And yet, there's all these other people with David Icke all over their place because they're deceivers. I was stricken because I'm of the body of Christ. Like I was talking about the TIs and the get people getting gang stalked. Only if you're truly a chosen of Christ are you getting gang stalked. So live up to that. Turn to Christ for your protection because that's what's going on. He's calling you. It's 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 a it's a it's a warning shot off your bow. Okay? And uh don't get lost. Alright. Lord bless you all. And thank you for listening.